Now in recent years, otters have made an astonishing comeback after their numbers were almost wiped out in the 1970s and 80s, but they remain incredibly wary of humans. So we knew that trying to film a family of otters that had been seen on the river Hull wouldn't be easy. Hidden away in a corner of East Yorkshire is an unlikely nature reserve, a place where modern industrial man comes face to face with a spectacular array of wildlife. This little known site at Top Hill Low on the River Hull is part nature reserve and part water treatment works. The 300 acre facility, which is run by Yorkshire Water, has a mix of woodland, marshes and lagoons that are surrounded on all sides by intensely farmed land. Now this place supplies about 85% of Hull's drinking water, but it also plays host to a vast array of wildlife. It's best known for its birds, with over 160 species regularly seen each year, but there are plenty of other animals hiding away. Now one of the most prized assets is a family of extremely camera-shy otters, and we're going to try and film them, although I suspect it isn't going to be easy. These daylight pictures of otters were filmed in Somerset and are rare because the animals are mostly nocturnal and wary of humans. Otter numbers are now back on the increase after they reached an all-time low in the 1970s due to pollution and loss of habitat. They are native to the River Hull, but with only one family living at the Top Hill Low Reserve, they'll be hard to find. Luckily, the site ranger, Richard Hampshire, is something of an expert. So how do you know that otters are, are using this area? Well, they're very much creatures of habit. Um, they'll always use the very same routes between different hunting grounds on different water bodies. A prime one would be this trail here that we see in front of us. You can see they're making a very regular route, always using the same track to the point where they're virtually wearing it out as they make their way into the next uh, adjoining ditch. This is your classic otter sprint here. So this is otter poo, basically? Yeah. it's quite brittle stuff um, but when you actually pick it up you can see the makeup of it it's full of tiny little fish bones and bits and pieces in there from what they've been eating and this is an absolute giveaway that otters have been using this area and, and, and are in this part of the world yeah this is this is proof positive really <laughs> To try and encourage otters to settle in the nature reserve, they're being given a helping hand. Otter halts or houses to you and me are being dug into suitable sites. Otters, they like to nest in underground chambers. They like to have somewhere where they've got easy access into water. Um, it's quite a quiet area set back in the wood where nobody normally walks. So it's a nice quiet spot where we can uh, set this halt into. It might need to go on diagonal perhaps. We shift it around a bit to match that hole up there. So what we would expect to see is that within about maybe two years or so it might take um, until they get used to it. Really? Honestly, two yeah. years? Yeah, you've got a lot of human scent here. Obviously, there's all these guys working on the installation of it. It's a new feature. They're not going to be too sure about it. There's always that potential that they could view it as a trap or something like that. So for an otter that finds this, it's, it's a pretty good home, isn't it? It's excellent, yeah. It's just as good as they come for an otter, it must be. So, <laughs> so the best thing we can do now, then, is just, just leave it be? That's it, yeah. Right. Right. So, down to business. Our aim now is to try and get these otters on camera. So then, Richard, how do you propose we film these otters tonight, then? Well, we've got two options. One is the old-fashioned way, that we're going to stake them out and see if we can actually see them using some night vision gear. The other is to use one of these camera traps, which uh, takes a picture every time the subject moves past it on a sensor, and hopefully we'll pick something up on that, too. But they are quite elusive, aren't they? So it's going to be tricky. Fingers crossed. <laughs> It'll pick anything up to around a kind of 10 metre range, somewhere around about that kind of distance. So uh, hopefully anything that does go past, we should have a, a reasonable chance of getting it. So all we have to do now is wait for the dark and hope for some otters. Once we start to lose the light, we've uh, got the use of these rather trick night vision binoculars. So the plan is that we'll be able to use these to uh, get a, a view after the hours of darkness. Maybe up until about half past ten at night, I think we'll give it and see if we get any success. The light's pretty much gone now, so we're switching to the infrared cameras and uh, hopefully that'll let us see anything that comes past now. 
We scour the marsh area for any signs that otters might be about, but after several hours, nothing. I think maybe our luck's out for tonight, unfortunately. Should we go check the camera trap anyway? We'll see if anything slipped us by. We pick our way back through the dark to where we set the camera, but sadly, the only thing it's captured is us coming to check it. Well, we've not seen anything tonight, but we're not gonna give up there. We're gonna reset the traps and then come back here at a later date, and hopefully we'll pick something up. Now, it's been about two months since we were last at the nature reserve, and in that time, there have been some reported sightings of otters. So we're on our way back, and we just have to hope that one of them has been through one of our trail cameras. Hi then, Richard. Hi, Jamie. Good to see you again. You too, yeah, yeah. So, how about these otters then? Well, we'll have to wait and see. We'll go and empty the camera trap and see what it's picked up in the last couple of months since we set it up. So, has anyone seen any otters around here recently? Yeah, quite a few of our regulars who've been very keen, put the hours in on a night, have been successful, so we'll see what we get. So. Fingers crossed? Yeah. <laughs> So look at what we've got. Let's see what we've got on the camera then. We load the camera's card onto a computer and now it's just a question of what it's seen. Ah, uh, road here again. A book that time with the antlers. Tail end of a pheasant. And there we are, our otter. So it is. In fact, there's well, a, another one. Yeah, one look of at the, that. Yeah, probably one of the cubs, that I should think, that's just jumping in from the picture there. So, so how old would they be then? I think this is probably these this winter's youngsters um, on, the, on the film there, so I reckon, yeah, probably about six months old or so. It's just one glimpse from two months of filming, but it proves they're still on the reserve. Richard then shows me some footage he managed to get when they were younger. This is the, uh, the mother and her cubs. So. Look at that. Yeah, there's the mother in the lead there. There's a oh, no, three cubs as well. So, uh, that is fantastic, isn't it? To get a view like that, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter how many hours you put in, to be quite honest, you, you'd never manage to get a, get a close-up like that. Richard has also managed to get some rare footage of otters in daylight on his video camera in the last few days. You can just see them breaching there or porpoising like a group of dolphins. It's actually the same family that we've been seeing on the uh, camera trap here. That's fantastic. They really are quite visible, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're actively hunting the reed bed here. And I suppose the thing about filming them is you've got to be prepared to be there night after night after night because obviously the one night you don't turn up, there they are. So proof positive that the otters exist, but if you want to see them, you need to have a lot of time, a lot of patience and a little bit of luck.